Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with me tonight. We're going to be talking about the prequel slash tie-in novel to Star Wars Jedi Survivor called Battle Scars. I'll be fully going into spoilers for this novel, so if you want to read it, I recommend you don't watch this. But if you're not interested, I'm going to do a brief summation of what you should know going into the game and also give my thoughts on the book, which obviously based on the title, I really didn't care for. In fact, and excuse my voice, I'm a little sick. There were only one or two things that I could take away as positives from this book. The first is that it was quite short. I listened to it on Audible. It was only 10 hours. That's good. I didn't want to listen to any more. The second is that there were a few good scenes with some existing characters from the prior game, especially Grease, and to a lesser extent, I would say Seer. All right, so what's the plot? Let's be very basic. For one, the book doesn't do a good job of establishing much of what's happened to the Stinger Mantis crew since the events of Jedi Fallen Order. We get lots of sort of allusions to, oh, we're family now, we love each other, you know, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else from all of the crew, which is nice, I like that dynamic in both the original game and to a lesser degree in this story, but we learn almost nothing about anything major they've done. We are, however, a few years out from the events of the first game and probably sort of in the midway point between that and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And this is a very, very low stakes story, which I'm personally fine with if it's executed well. I actually sometimes prefer the low stakes story, but if you're going to go that way, you have to have to really focus on personal development or crew dynamics or something else to sort of move the story along. That's one of the major things that this book doesn't do. So it starts off with the Stinger Mantis crew trying to destroy the Haxian Brood base. They're basically a gang of pirates that have been chasing them for a long time. While doing so, Marin and Cal kill, and I'm not exaggerating here, I'd guess two to three hundred people. And this is one part where I started to feel quite weird about how the book was treating things. We get a lot of insight into Marin's head, but less into Seer and Cal's. And it's a real problem that Cal is ruthlessly, and I mean ruthlessly, murdering hundreds of people. Some of them are stormtroopers, some of them are honestly just mercenaries and bounty hunters, he is killing them en masse, and he describes it as fun, which I thought was really strange, considering how much lip service the book plays to, oh, Jedi have to do what's right, we can't give in to the dark side in even a minute, or you'll fall like Seer almost did in the first game. Just really bizarre. Like, I understand that you want to make things video gamey, and I think that's okay. They had Cal, for example, taking the stim packs from BD, just like he does in the video games. That's fine, but I think you can add nuance where video games naturally can't because at the end of the day, they do have to be games. Anyway, while destroying the Haxian Brood base, they end up picking up a stormtrooper who's attempting to defect. And this is one of the worst parts of the book for me. This is the character of Fret. Fret becomes the immediate love interest of Marin. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say immediate to the point where it actually ruined Marin's character for me. I'm not one of those people that needs Marin to be in love with Cal or to be with Cal. I'm not shipping the characters. I never ship characters. I don't really care care who Marin ends up with. The problem was how the book ended up treating her after the introduction of Fret like a piece of meat almost. So the one or two chapters before Fret shows up are interesting because we're really focusing on how Marin is starting to lose use of her powers, her night sister magic. Fret shows up, she's the blandest, blandest character of all time, and Marin just immediately falls in love with her to the point where she really talks about nothing else for the entire novel. And I I don't think that's necessarily a problem, but if you're going to center the novel around a single relationship, which this book does, you need to make the relationship seem realistic. We, as readers, need to understand why one of these characters is so infatuated with another, and we just don't. Fred's described early on in the most boring ways possible, so Marin's infatuation with her isn't really, I don't want to say valid, but it's not interesting, and it ends up making much of the book just an entire slog. Like, there's a lot of, I guess, adult scenes more so than you'd expect in most Star Wars novels. Right up there with Lost Stars. There's not, like, explicit sex or anything, but there's pretty much everything leading up to that, and I'm okay with that. However, if you want to make an adult novel, then you have to make the actual relationship itself adult. Otherwise, it's just boring, and that's part of the problem with this book. It's just boring. Marin becomes a mindless girl with a crush. It really, really just stinks. It just stinks. 
Anyway, Fret ends up giving the Stinger Mantis crew a mission. It's literally the dumbest thing ever. They're sent to track down this game-changing piece of technology called the Shroud, which is sort of like a cloaking device, I guess. It doesn't really matter because the instant it's introduced, you know nothing is going to happen with it. It's a complete MacGuffin in the worst ways possible. They do these missions to Mercana. Eventually, they track down the thing, and it turns out that the Shroud, or the plans for the Shroud really is what they were looking for, is not actually a thing. It's a person. It's Fret's ex-girlfriend, which is a bit weird because she's a Nikto, and I can't imagine anybody finding a Nikto attractive, but for real. Of course, we learned that, well, the Shroud not only has not been made yet, but it can't be made. It just doesn't work. The technology's not there. So they spent the whole time tracking this thing down that obviously doesn't exist, and of course, at the end, there's the surprise twist that the guy who gives them the mission, supposedly rebel sympathizer, but described as a ruthless capitalist, he ends up being a bad guy. Huge shocker there. And as this is all happening, it's as boring as I'm describing. Another thing that happens, though, is the introduction of the fifth brother. And this was, like, they had so many Inquisitors they could have chosen for this book. I don't know why they would choose one that we know survives until the events of Malachor. We've got a lightsaber duel between Cal and Seer and the fifth brother, and it's like, okay, I know Cal and Seer survive pretty much uninjured into the next game. I know the fifth brother survives until Malachor. It's like, the battle has literally no tension, and it's not like we're learning anything about the Inquisitorius or the fifth brother. It actually doesn't even make sense why he's involved, because he's existing to move this prototype. They don't know that there'll be Jedi there. It's literally just like the author wanted him in this book. It's so, like, clunky. It's so badly done. And of course, after hundreds of stormtroopers and hundreds of mercenaries have been killed, there is a moment where Seer offers, you know, peace, returning to the light side to the fifth brother when they have him beaten. I just couldn't help but shake my head. It's the worst thing that Star Wars does over and over again. Star Wars Legends did this a ton too. Every stormtrooper is killable, but when there's a guy whose face you can see, you gotta at least try to save him and you gotta give up the opportunity to kill him 10 times if there's even a slim chance of saving him. The book was a slog. Like, there's very little positive that I can say about it. The one thing, as mentioned, that I liked was some of the crew interactions. We see Seer seems to be a little bit, I don't know if she's slipping, but she's definitely got a different idea of what the galaxy looks like or what their fight against the Empire looks like than Cal. Cal believes that their job as the Mantis crew is to make small attacks against the Empire, slowly whittle them down as much as they can. Seer thinks they need to build a legacy for the Jedi, and obviously we're going to see the split in Jedi Survivor based on the trailers we've seen. I actually quite enjoyed reading about that. She also finds a circlet that was in Night Seal Republic. I believe it's the circlet of Suresh, kind of like a Jedi artifact. Grease actually was well written. One of the big takeaways is that he loses one of his arms in the battle against the fifth brother. I actually enjoyed enjoyed that scene afterwards because he wasn't himself and it created a lot of tension in the crew. I thought that was well done. Overall though, when writing this book in my podcast, Tap Calf Transmissions, everyone with Corey loses, I gave it a D and I honestly think that's really well deserved. Corey gave it a C. Obviously, it's from a F to S tier ranking. If you want more of our thoughts, I'll link to that down below. But I just think about like Lost Stars, which is such a competently written romance novel. It's got those moments of like uber horniness that this book obviously wanted to have but it's well written and believable and compelling where this has none of that. It like, it wants the sexy parts of a romance without the actual interesting part. That's why it comes off like fan fiction. And I don't like saying that really about authors very much, both because I think it's kind of a cruel thing to say both to the author and to people who write fan fiction, but that's the way it comes off. It's schlocky, it's not good, but a lot of people did like it. So maybe my review is not resonating with you or maybe you wanna, you know, get some other opinions. I highly recommend you do that because it's not like there's been universal dislike for this book. And I always recommend if you're unsure, the library, they have both physical copies and audiobooks for you to check out. And I also don't want to be the guy and I don't want to be portrayed as somebody who hates the new Star Wars canon novels. I really don't. Star Wars Ronin came out last year. I really enjoyed that one. Not canon per se, but whatever. Like I said, I loved Lost Stars. I thought the Alphabet Squadron trilogy, although I actually didn't like the first book on my first reading. Overall, I thought that was phenomenal. So yeah, have you read this book? What do you think? The positive is, I think there's no way that this impacts Jedi Survivor at all. In fact, it's pretty clear that the author, Sam Meggs, got the plot points for Jedi Survivor and worked backwards. Grease needs to have a lost arm, for example. We need to know why Seer and Cal are split up. I also don't think, for those of you who are shipping uh, Cal and Marin, that this anyway precludes their relationship. Marin sort of contemplates a relationship between the two. It ends with them holding hands and a somewhat tender moment. It is kind of funny because towards the end of the book, Marin's thinking 
talking about how she can't imagine life without her new partner, how they're like twin sons. And I'm just thinking, except she's not going to be in the game, so we gotta find a way to write her out. And she doesn't die or anything, they kinda just decide to be friends. On the note of Cal, I thought he was one of the most underused parts of this book. He's pretty much written one dimensionally as a goody two-shoes type character. I did enjoy reading about some of the effects of his psychometry, but yeah, he was just, I'm gonna sacrifice myself for the group. That, that sort of plot thread over and over again. Anyway, that's all I got. No hate to the author. Um, I do think the author is probably going to get a lot of hate because I know Sam Meggs has in the past. I just want to say I haven't read anything about her. I haven't read any of her books. I'm not disliking this because of who she is. I think it's unfortunate she's going to and has in the past got hate. I'll definitely be reading her next book with an open mind, but this one didn't quite do it for me.